All right, here we go with our second set of notes in the taxonomy of plants unit, this one on seedless plants. So we're obviously we're going to talk about the types of plants that do not have seeds, as well as some of the parts of a general plant and vascular tissue and what that is in plants. So to begin with, we'll talk about the different parts of the plant. Um, going from the ground up, you've got the roots, obviously, in the bottom under the ground. And the main job of roots, well, kind of three main jobs, the first one being to anchor the plant, okay, so to keep it from blowing away or washing away in water. Uh, they also absorb water and minerals, so you might remember that from previous lessons, water going into the roots and then also absorbing the minerals there. And they come in two different forms. You have tap roots or fibrous roots. So a tap root would be like these guys down here with one big main central root versus fibrous roots have lots of lots of little fibers going out everywhere. As we move up, we come to the shoot or the stem mm -hmm. of the plant. This is the part that obviously supports most of the plant. And really its main job is to be transporting water and material from the roots in the leaves back and forth, up and down. As we move further up the plant, you come to the leaves. And of course the main job of the leaves is it's the principal site of photosynthesis. So they're going to be making um, sugars there to be used for energy storage later on or making cellulose to form more cell walls and things like that. And one interesting adaptation that leaves have is they have something called a cuticle, so it's like a waxy covering of their leaves to keep them from drying out too much. And then finally we get to the flowers, and the flower's main job of course is reproduction, right, so attracting um, insects for pollination through different means, either being a visual stimulus or um, olfactory, so providing a scent and then different structures that we're going to talk about later to help that pollination event happen. The first group of plants that we're going to talk about are the bryophytes, or it would be division bryophyta. Division is actually the same thing as the phylum, they just call it divisions in plants for some reason. The most common plants found in division bryophyta are, of course, the mosses. And they have several key characteristics that we'll be talking about again and again in comparing often to these guys. The first characteristic is they don't have true roots. They don't have the true roots that we just talked about in the last slide. They have something called rhizoids. They're really just more for anchoring. They're not doing as much in the way of absorbing nutrients as true roots would be doing. Second is reproduction, right? We talked about the fact that they are seedless, right? This is the seedless plants unit. Um, so they have no seeds, and these guys are unique in the fact that they actually do have swimming sperm. So definitely require water for that to happen because the sperm need to swim. And finally, these plants have no vascular tissue. So these three things combined, having no true roots, um, having no seeds but swimming sperm and no vascular tissue, explain why we always find moss growing in wet environments low to the ground, right? Um, they need the water because they can't absorb it as well through their roots, and they need the water to reproduce because they don't have any seeds or anything else, and they don't have any vascular tissue. We'll talk about vascular tissue later on, but that helps transport water. It also gives the plant a little bit of structure. So without that structure, they can't grow up very high. So when you think about where you find mosses in wet areas, growing on logs or growing on rocks like in this picture down here, um, it's explained perfectly by their physical makeup. The second group of plants that we're going to talk about today is uh, division pterophyta. The P is silent, like in pterodactyl. Uh, pterophyta, these guys are the ferns. And first key characteristic is these guys still, again, do not have seeds, right? We're still in the seedless plants, but they have spores. Uh, so when you look at a picture of a fern, maybe you've seen this like this in the woods before, they have these spores. They're not seeds. Um, so they don't have any protection, and they can't spread as easily, but they can still spread a little bit more than the mosses swimming, swimming sperm can, and they're not as reliant on water. So they have the advantage of that. They don't rely on water as much and can spread a little bit, just not a ton. And these guys, unlike the bryophytes, do have vascular tissue. So they have xylem and phloem. What the heck are xylem and phloem, you might ask? That's a really good question. Xylem and phloem are types of vascular tissue found in plants, and they're basically like the plant's arteries, just like your arteries and veins are called your vascular tissue. Um, so they transport stuff around the body of the plant. And there's two types of vascular tissue, xylem, which transports water, and phloem, kind of a weird word, uh, phloem, which transports nutrients. Uh, I like to think of phloem transports food, and that helps me remember it. 
in addition to transporting materials, both xylem and phloem also provide structure. Xylem, for example, forms the woody tissue of plants. So whenever you're like chopping wood or stacking wood, that's the, the xylem. Basically what both mostly makes up a tree is the xylem. And so this is going to allow plants to grow up. So like we said, uh, mosses don't have xylem or phloem, so they don't grow up as easily versus the pteraphytes, the, the ferns. They can grow upwards a little bit more because they do have some of that woody tissue. They do have a, some xylem and some phloem. And with that, we are done with this set of notes.